Hello and welcome to How to Use D&D Beyond. D&D Beyond is a uh, well, it's a browser, uh, just D&D Beyond. Um, it's a browser, uh, well, it's a browser sort of. It's a, it's a website that you can use for the creation of characters for D&D games. So we're going to be creating a character. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go to Collections, My Characters, and click Create a Character. You then have three different ways. Randomize is just like random stuff if your DM says that you're going to be using random characters. Quick Build is just allowing you to use starting options. Standard is the one that we're going to be using where we have step-to-step -step approach. Now, uh, first, first things first, uh, you can choose any of the sources. I don't use Everon or Magic the Gathering, however I do use Homebrew and Critical Role content. Uh, this is really dependent on your Dungeon Master, I prefer to use XP for your Advancement type. You don't need to use the optional class features or customising your origin. Uh, hit Point type, you will want that to be manual, uh, because that changes if you don't have it manual. These should be good. Uh, your DM will decide this again. Um, I prefer no encumbrance or coin weight, so you need to tick that. So ticking that will ignore the coin weight. This doesn't really matter because that's just for your. You can randomize your name, or you can put in your, um, uh, or you can put in, um, uh, you can put in your name there for your character. Uh, then, if you've not bought anything on D and D Beyond, you can pick any of these races. You can go for an Arakrokra, which gives you the uh, ability to fly and allows you to use talons if you don't want to use a melee. Also gives you plus one to your charisma stat and plus two to dexterity. There is a link in the description to what, ever, what the sort of classes are and the races are. Uh, we're going to go with one of these. We're going to go with the Dragonborn, which is a plus two strength and plus one to charisma. Gives you Draconic Accentry, a breath weapon, and damage resistance. So we're going to be choosing that race. Then, dependent on your race, you can have an extra thing here. You can click on that and then select something. So we're just going to select green because, you know, green rocket and that gives us poison damage. Next up, you want to choose your class. Um, Blood Hunter, Critical Role Content. Um, if, for these classes, just literally all you want to do is just look at the class. Search up how to play and then take a look at the class and find out the class for you. I'm going to write, I'm just sort of going to, I'm not going to explain this one, but I'm going to explain all the other ones in very brief context. Barbarian, you can hit things hard and go into rage mode and just smack them people into the ground. Bard, you play music and seduce people. Cleric, you heal people and you also have a taser. Druid, you use, you use the power of mother, uh, well, mother nature herself to slap people in the face. Fighter, you're boring. Monk, holy cow, that's a lot of health, and holy cow, you can use spells at such a low level. Paladin, sword and shield, and magic. Ranger, just no. Rogue, sneaky little pe uh, people who like to sneak into corners and then stab you in the back for 66 damage. Sorcerer, but like, a, 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 the Chad version of wizard. Warlock. A, a wizard who decided instead of learning magic at a school, he decided to sign his life away to a patron. And wizard. Intelligent people who get cast away. So we're just going to be using rogue for this one, because, yeah. Um, then you've also got, so then you've got your HP here. You shouldn't really change that until you've set the next thing. Uh, then for here, uh, you'll have your hit points, and then there'll be a bunch of other stuff here. But if it's got a little blue outline with an exclamation mark, click on the tab and you'll have different options. So I'm just going to pick some random rogue skills like sleight of hand, stealth, deception, and perception. And then, you, and then if you're a rogue, you get two expertises. So you get to pick anything that you know. So thieves tools is always good. Uh, and then you pick from one of these, which we're going to be using deception. Uh, on other things, you will have spells here. Uh, we'll take a look in that right now, actually. We'll just go to previous, back here again. Uh, we'll press add another class. That is multi-classing, 
we're not going to be uh, doing that. We're just going to be changing this to, well, we're going to be pressing the X and confirm to get rid of that. So we're just going to go with wizard just to, so I can show you. You've got the spells thing here, you can pick proficiencies, which you can do arcana and medicine. And that's what I usually do. And then you want to change your level to what your dungeon master says is your first level. So it's usually going to be level 3. And that just gives you arcane tradition if you're a wizard and other subclasses depending on your um, class. And then that just gives you some stuff here. Um, so and now we're going to go into a section for spells. Spells, you've got prepared spells, where your spells are spellbook, which is what spells you know, and add spells, which is where you can add spells. You've got your spells here, and so you've got all of these that you can learn. But if we take a look here, it says cantrips and prepared spells. Uh, you've got to take a look at those and make sure you don't go over. So cantrips. Uh, a good cantrip could be something like mage hand to smash people. Minor Illusion and Poison Spray is what I usually use. You can use whatever you like, this is purely my opinion. And then we have three um, first level, second level, or third level spells. I think it's only two levels because of what level we are though. So you just want to pick some random ones. So we're just going to go with Absorb Elements because that's a first level spell. Uh, detect Magic and we're also going to go for if I we're going to go for shield, so we're going to be not not that much. We're going to mainly utility people. Uh, next up, you have your ability scores, your generation method. You've got standard array where you get given the numbers eight, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen to put in any of here. You have the point by system, which is basically you've got twenty seven points and then you put them into more points that anything that's over thirteen requires two extra points to go up. Or you've got the manual, where you roll for your dice, or just decide to be an absolute idiot and just put 18 in every single one possible. Then you can go back here and roll your dice. 3d6. Well, level 3. So because of the way that D&D works, the first thing you get is 6 HP. Because that. You then roll 2d6, and so we're just going to give you the maximum that you can physically get which is 18. Apply that, you've got 30 health at level 3. That's because wizards don't get that much health. Next up, you've got your background. Background, you can choose from any one of these, or you can buy something else. So we're just going to be going with Haunted One. You can get extra skill proficiencies uh, from here, or and you can also get languages. We're just taking Abyssal and Deep Speech, because why not? You can also add your uh, pic portrait here, so dependent on your race, it can actually give you a bunch of different suggestions. We're going to go with this sort of thing because it looks cool. Next up, we've got these. You choose starting equipment. Starting equipment, active items, inventory, other possessions, and add items. Add items is only for things if your dungeon master says, hey, add abacus to your item, to your inventory. Active items are the items that you get afterwards. Starting equipment is what you choose. Always choose equipment. If you take gold, you're bad because you'll just pick 16 and add that starting gold. Equipment. We're going to be taking a quarter staff, a component pouch, depending on if your dungeon master says no. Uh, explorer's pack, and we're just going to be adding that start as equipment. You'll always want your spell book because without it, you can't cast spells. You'll then want to wield your sword like pressing the wheel thing by when in your inventory and then if you have any armor press where other possessions will be things like a silver coin what's next you, you you view your character sheet this is your character sheet now here you have all your stats here you've got your name you've got your level you've got your race you've got your class you've got your defenses you've got your armor class you've got your hit points you've got your initiative and you've got all of your skills you also got your saving throw modifiers. And then D&D Beyond has got something very nice for, into it where you can actually click this and it rolls it for you. So such as if I roll a wisdom save, I roll a three, just kidding, I've got nine, six, nine. You're welcome. 